Hi, this is Phil McPhail with United Country Lifestyle Properties of Maine. Today we're going to take a look at a property in Bradford. It's 140 acres of off-grid timberland. And stick around a little later on. We'll show you the property itself. We'll tell you the price as well as the tax information on this property. Bradford is located about 25 miles northwest of Bangor, Maine. And getting here is, is really easy. Uh, if you're coming from the south, you're going to get off the uh, Broadway exit and pick up Route 15 out of Bangor, head west. Turn on to 221, you're going to follow it up through the towns of Hudson and eventually into Bradford. I'm coming into Bradford from the Howland exit, uh, exit 217 off I-95 because I, our office is in Lincoln and we're north of this property, so I'll be coming south on 95 to access it. This is uh, what's called Anna King Corner. Uh, you wouldn't know that. I don't know if it still shows on a map, but that building right in front of us used to be Anna King store when I was younger. Old Anna King still owned it and operated it. So uh, this is Route 11. And one, one thing you'll find about Bradford, it's, um, it is kind of a bedroom community of the city of Bangor. A lot of people that live here work there. Uh, but there's also a lot of small farms in Bradford. It's a farm we're going by right now here on Route 11. A lot of corn grown here, uh, some potatoes, some livestock, and there's a number of forever farms, uh, some land that was uh, forever protected to be farmland by uh, the uh, conservation group for farm here in Maine. Bradford has a population of about 1,290 people. Uh, Bradford was uh, became a plantation in 1820 and was incorporated in 1831. One of the original settlers here was, was Cornelius Bradford. And I do not believe the town was named after Cornelius. I think it was named after a town in, in Massachusetts. But uh, what's interesting about Cornelius is he was a direct descendant of Governor William Bradford of the Plymouth Colony. Today, most of the people who live here in Bradford, uh, there's a few people still farming here like we talked about earlier. Uh, but they, they work in the woods, uh, they work at, in Bangor, or some of them work at the railroad uh, that's not too far from here in Brownville. It's just a real, real uh, rural town, mostly big pieces of forest land with farm fields scattered all over it. Bradford has always been a great town for me. We've sold uh, thousands of acres here over the years, and one of the big draws is the uh, quality of the recreational hunting opportunities here. All these extra, these farm fields, um, they produce a lot of feed for the wildlife as well as the local livestock. And uh, the, the hunting has always been good here for white-tailed deer and for black bear. One of the cool places here in Bradford, Maine is the John B. Curtis Memorial Library. This building was built in 1915 and is an example of neoclassic revival. All right, this is the, uh, coming up here on the right is the Bradford Town Office and there's also a nice community center here. Um, take a quick run in so you can see the where you'd be. This is on Waters Lane. Um, all of your tax information and everything you need to know is here. They got like a little gym inside this building. Very nice structure. And it's a Saturday in January and nobody's home here today. Okay, we're coming north on 155 right now and we're right here at the corner of the Wilder Davis Road. This old building, I believe, was a Grange Hall and it was uh, not too long ago the Bradford Town office. We're gonna turn right here on Wilder Davis and this property is located at the very end of the road. And there is a cell tower right here at the uh, business end of Wilder Davis Road. Um, so if you're asking if communications are good, yes, uh, you get a great cell service signal right here in the center of Bradford. Okay, about halfway down the Wilder Davis Road, we're, we end the town maintained section, and this is a privately maintained section of the road. Uh, there are some people that live down here, and they plow it. Okay, we've arrived at the property and, uh, you know, if you're wondering, is there a bunch of virgin timber here? No, there isn't. Uh, this was some old, older uh, spruce fir, mostly fir, and it's just recently been logged. Um, so, 
they're not even done cleaning it up yet, but they're gonna have me sell it for them. So this is an interior road. We're running along the northern boundary of the property, and this, this road kind of just follows right along the edge of it. The land to the left of this road uh, was also recently harvested, but that is not for sale. Okay, we're, uh, we're right here where this blue dot is indicating we're at on the map, and you'll see a uh, bit of a pond here in the road on both sides of the road. The property here in Bradford, it abuts the town of Bradford's public lot. Uh, and they just did a harvest here as well. A lot, a lot of this was fur. I did speak to the forester and they, they cut most of the fur out of here. Um, that was his prescription. He, feel, he felt that they didn't cut that fur out, that whatever they left behind would probably fall over. And he's, I'm sure he's right. Um, but we're gonna get out here. We're gonna park in this next yard and take a walk on this lot and show you some of the features. Well, this 140 acres is, uh, I said earlier, has just been timber harvested. Um, we're standing on a skid trail here. I just snowshoed in on this from the pickup. The, uh, the land here on the northeast corner, I'll show you this map in a minute. The best part of this, the soils here are in the northeast corner of the land. Um, the southern extreme, which comes up against the town of Hudson, is very wet. There's a lot of bog there, um, some forested wetlands. Great cover for game, not so good for, for much for farming or anything like that. So this is kind of a, I wouldn't call it a pure recreational lot, but it's, it's probably best suited to that. Maybe an off-grid homestead up here in the northeast corner. Some of this land could be worked. It would take a lot of work to get it into a farm. But uh, anyway, we're going to look around a little bit more of the property. Come along for the, for the walk. Like I said, here we are, this is uh, the blue dot is where we're located. The road that we drove in on parallels this boundary, which is the northern boundary. This is a trapezoid shaped property. Wilder Davis Road coming in here. And then uh, the town of Hudson town line is down here on the southern end of the property. Okay, we've worked our way off this knoll on the northeast corner and we're right at the transition where we kind of enter the, into a forested wetland and you'll see this blue ribbon if you're out here walking and the forester has uh, flagged this out so that the logging crew didn't accidentally enter into that wetland area. Um, this, this wet area here is kind of the headwaters of Logan Brook. Uh, there's a, a small uh, wetland here and then eventually it, it drains into Logan Brook. There's a, there's a seasonal stream here and actually I think it may run year-round. So this this forested wetland here, there's there's some alder in here and still some spruce fir on the edges. Uh, they didn't harvest anything in here. This is great cover for whitetail, black bear, moose, all your woodland creatures. And eventually over here where they did the harvest when this starts coming back in, this area will be game rich for a number of years with all the new shoots coming up. This part of the lot is nice and flat and actually if you came in here and you wanted to do a food plot or make a field for a homestead, clear out, take all the trees off three, four, five acres here, this shouldn't be too hard to work. I'm sure it's rocky according to the soil maps that you'll see here, but um, this should grow. It'll definitely grow trees well provide a lot of new food for the game, but I think you could farm this, or at least have some pasture in here. But you'd, you'd have to get these trees off. And... Okay, we're back here at the truck, um, wrapping up this tour of this land here in Bradford. This 140 acres. Um, interesting in Maine, you, you'll see a lot of this, but uh, the deed claims this is 135 acres. The town's taxing it for 140. When we overlaid these, Forester's uh, 
boundary markers here, it, can, it seems to be pretty close to 140, so maybe the town's right. The only way you'll ever know that for sure, folks, is to get a survey done, so that's maybe a topic for another video. But again, this, this property is priced at $75,000. The taxes are just over $400 a year, and it is in the tree growth tax program. If you don't know what that is, check out the video. We'll link it up above here so you can, you can see what that is. Um, but now we're going to take a tour of the city of Bangor, which isn't far from here. And if you want to see that, stick around and you can see the town of Bangor. And don't forget, while you're still here, hit the like and subscribe. Bangor International Airport offers a broad range of convenient and affordable jet service to major destinations around the United States. Bangor, its sister city brewer across the Penobscot River and the metro area surrounding the city, has a population of about 153,000. Constructed in 2013, the Cross Insurance Center seats 8,500 people for concerts and features a 2,000 person convention center. This is a place to enjoy live entertainment and sporting events. Are you feeling lucky? Come try the live poker room and slots at Hollywood Casino. Enjoy a summer concert at Dialing's Waterfront Pavilion. Bangor is one of the safest small cities in the United States. Come to downtown Bangor and enjoy craft brews, great little restaurants, some unique shops along the downtown area. This is a good place to walk along the riverfront and watch the ships and small boats coming in.